We said this somewhat uh, last week, but since the beginning of man, or at least since Genesis 3, in the fall of man, mankind has been looking for meaning and significance in their lives. Uh, we mentioned last week that if you go back and look at any of the, the great thinkers of our day, all of them made some type of statement on the meaning of life is, and uh, I would say after reading the book of Ecclesiastes, that many of them by far missed the point. Uh, they came way short in concluding what the meaning of life is. But all of them have thought about it, and all of us have, have struggled at times to, to put meaning and purpose and, and significance uh, in our lives. And, and the reason for that often is we're looking in the wrong places. We're looking at the wrong things. And, and Solomon, in writing the book of Ecclesiastes, was the king of Jerusalem. He had, uh, as we're going to talk about today, people under him and great things and great accomplishments. And yet, somewhere near the end of his life, Solomon is stopping to consider all of those things. And he's, he's coming to the conclusion that everything that I strove for in my life, apart from God, was all vanity. It was empty. There was really no meaning to it. There was really no purpose to it. And, and so many people today, in my opinion, get near the end of their lives and they, at some point, do what Solomon did. And they say, man, something's missing. I've worked hard, I've labored, I've done a lot of things. But, but as I look back on my life, it's empty. Something is lacking. Something is, is missing. I believe in, in many ways we see that in, in our culture today. This, this search for meaning and significance and, and the continual coming up empty and, and just having that sense that, that we're missing something. We have a culture today that is... Uh, attempting in many ways to define human existence. You know, and, and we struggle with that. Why do humans exist? Why are we here? Where did we come from? Where are we going? And we see that in our culture today. We have a, a culture today that continually asks, does my life have meaning? What is the meaning? Is my life important? Is it significant? And I don't believe that it's just one or two that are asking. I believe that as we look across our culture today, we see people that are, in one way or other, striving to answer that question. I had one of the girls on my soccer team come this week, and, and it, really, it really took me back when she said it. But it fit so well with this message series that I thought, i got to use it. And so she came to practice one day, and she says, you know, I, I took a test today in school, and I passed. But she says, what difference does it make? She said, someday I'm going to die. And, and so why do I take tests? And what, don't, teens don't get any ideas. Why do I take tests? And why do I do these things? What does it all matter? And I thought, wow, that's so deep. And I said to her, hey, that's my message series on Sunday morning. You need to come. And she's not here this morning. But you need to come and you need to hear that because that's what we're talking about. And I thought, man, isn't it interesting? I've never heard in, I don't know, 10 or 12 years that I've coached, I've never heard one of the girls say that before. And I started a series on Ecclesiastes on Sunday morning, and I think it was Monday that she came to practice and said that. And I thought, man, people are looking for significance. We're looking for importance, and we're questioning in our culture, is what I'm doing important? And in her case, is my going to school and studying and even doing well, is it important? What's the value? And whether she realized it or not, she was looking at things the way Solomon is looking at them. And, and, and to some degree coming to the exact same conclusion that Solomon is. What is my purpose? And I have to say that many times as a church, and I say church as Christians in general, not specifically this church, but sometimes as, as a church today, we're not giving them the answers. And in many ways, we're afraid to give them the answers. We're afraid to stand up and say, hey, I understand where you're struggling. And I understand that, that, that life can be empty and seemingly without meaning in the course of forever. But we do have an answer. We do have an answer to the meaning and the purpose of life. And obviously that meaning and purpose in life points us to God. And it points us to what God wants 
in, in our lives. How many of you remember, and I'm sure he wrote more than one, but how many of you remember a song that was written by Paul Anka? Anybody? I said, there's one significant song. There's a lot of them, but I'll give you the one. I knew if I gave you the name, Susan, you'd know it right away. The one that I'm thinking of is, and I've lost it, My Way. I know, that's, that's the main one that people think of. Uh, sung by who? Yeah, I knew you'd get it. See, if I forget something, I just throw it out and you guys are good. But here, here's how the song goes, and I'm not going to sing it. Somebody wanted me to sing in Sunday school this morning. I did not. Scary. Pastor. But I won't sing this. But, but here's the words that he wrote. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway. But more, much more than this, I did it my way. Regrets? I've had a few. But then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do, and I saw it through without exemption. I planned each charted course, each careful step along the byway. But more, much more than this, I did it my way. Yes, there were times. I'm sure you knew. I'm sure, I'm sure you knew when I bit off more than I could chew. But through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. I faced it all, I stood tall, and did it my way. I've loved, I've laughed, I've cried, I've had my fill, my share of losing, and now, as tears subside, I find it all so amusing to think I did it all, to think I did all that, and may I say, not in a shy way, no, oh no, not me, I did it my way. For what is man, what has he got? If not himself, then he has not. To say these things, he truly feels. And not the worst of one who kneels. The record shows, I took the blows and did it my way. And I thought, you know, after reading those words, and I hadn't thought about those words in, in some time, but after reading those this week, I thought, you know, the question that I would have to ask to Paul or to Frank Sinatra as he sung those things is, did he really find the meaning of life? Did he really find the meaning of life? He's celebrating, saying, I did it my way. I did what I wanted. And if I didn't have myself, I didn't have anything. But I thought, you know, if we end our lives and that's our theme song, we're empty. We've missed it. We've come up short. And, and, and so Solomon is, is continuing in chapter 2 of Ecclesiastes to realize how short he came in life. Even though he did, and he accomplished, and he had, he lacked. And the one thing he lacked was the one thing that he couldn't buy and get. He came up short. Last week in chapter 1, we saw that Solomon tried to find the meaning of life without God. And his conclusion in the first couple of verses was vanity of vanity. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Everything is empty. Everything is empty. It's all meaningless. Or in order to come to that conclusion, he looked at several things. He says the earth is permanent. And we realize that the earth is probably not permanent. But for the course of our lives, that's the one thing that seems to remain the same. And Solomon said last week, the sun, whether I'm here or not, tomorrow morning the sun's going to come up. And tomorrow night the sun's going to set. And the earth is going to continue to turn on its axis. And the wind is going to continue to blow. And the sun is going to continue to come up. And the sun is going to continue to set. And, and Solomon says, that seems permanent. But he says, I'm not permanent. I'm going to disappear at some point in the midst of all of that. And that's going to continue. So what's the purpose of my life? <coughs> he also points to the coming and the going of the generation. And he says, you know, my generation comes and my generation lives. And, you know, every generation starts out with, we're going to change the world. We're going to turn things upside down. And then that generation passes away. What happens? A new generation comes. And Solomon says, you know, nothing is new. It's all the same. One generation comes and goes. The next generation does the same thing. And so Solomon looks at that and he says, then what's the meaning of my life? Solomon also said last week in chapter 1, no matter what we have, no matter how much we do, we're never satisfied. 
He says the ear never gets full of hearing and the eye never gets full of seeing. The water flows from the river into the ocean and the ocean never gets full. It keeps taking it in. It keeps taking it in. And, and I said last week that, you know, no matter how much we accomplish in our lives, we're never satisfied. We never seem to be able to look at our lives and say, man, I've done enough. Now we get tired and we say, okay, I'm tired of doing that and I need to back away. But, but we never get to the point where we can say, okay, man, I've really done something and I'm satisfied. We, we never get to that point. It's always a little more. We always want to accomplish just a little more in life. And, and Solomon did that. And he said, therefore, what's the, the meaning of my life? Solomon said, I looked into great wisdom and knowledge. And he said, I understood more than anybody had ever understood that lived. And instead of being fulfilled, he said it led to <coughs> vexation and emptiness and sorrow. I don't know who I was talking to this week. said, man, you know, knowledge is where it's at. And, you know, we need to gain more knowledge and learn and grow. And man, that's the purpose of our lives. And I said, yeah, but it leads to sorrow. It's almost, and, and please don't say, don't take this away from my message, but it's almost like the old saying, you know, ignorance is bliss. Solomon is saying, the more I know, the more I hurt, the more it pains me. And, and, and many of our great thinkers that we quoted last week said, the purpose of life is in knowledge. Solomon says, no, it's not. It leaves you more pain. In chapter 2, man, we got to move this one. In, in chapter 2, Solomon tries other things. And he says, okay, I'm going to look at other things and try to find the meaning of life. It may not be in knowledge, and it may not be in, in some of the things that we talked about in chapter 1, but maybe it's in <coughs> a few other things in chapter 2. And so in the first three verses, he tries to find pleasure, or he tries to find meaning and purpose in pleasure. He says, maybe the purpose of my life, and maybe true fulfillment in my life, comes from pleasure. Just having a good time. Now, when I first read that this week, or last week, I thought... Why would you think that's the purpose of life? I mean, who would think pleasure and having a good time is, is the purpose in life? And then I got to thinking, you know, put yourself in Solomon's shoes for a minute. Solomon is the, the king in Jerusalem. Now, how much responsibility went along with that? Tremendous amount of responsibility. Solomon, no doubt, was weighed down with the responsibilities of his position and we mentioned last week, kings and queens and leaders came from all over the world to ask Solomon questions and to test his knowledge and little doubt to, to get his help with their own struggles and their own difficulties. And so Solomon is weighed down with all kinds of pressure. And there's little doubt in my mind that there were sleepless nights. You know, man, I can't sleep. I've got so much to worry about. And, and, and perhaps in all of the pressure, Solomon is looking out at his kingdom. And what does he see? He sees people laughing. He sees people having a great time. He sees people drinking and celebrating and dancing and just enjoying the pleasures of life. And Solomon, in my opinion, says, you know what? Maybe I've missed something. I've worked so hard and I've strove for so much. Maybe, maybe it's just in pleasure. And, and so Solomon began to pursue pleasures in, in life. And in verse 1, he says, come now, he said, I said in my heart, come now, I will test you with pleasure. Enjoy yourself. Solomon says, you know what, maybe the meaning in life is just to put all my responsibilities behind and say, you know what, Solomon, just love life. Whatever is enjoyable, pursue that and forget everything else. I was thinking, you know, it's almost like, it's almost like kids. And, and kids, you, the kids that are here this morning, what, you, you can't wait for what? can't wait to grow up because, man, that's where it's at. You know, you get to be an adult. And, and what, do, what do most adults think? Oh, I wish I was a kid again. You know, I wish I didn't have all my responsibilities. I wish I could just put all my responsibilities aside and be a kid and, and, and not worry about those things. I, I think that's where Solomon is. I just need to enjoy life. And then he says in verse 2, he says, I said of laughter... It's mad. Solomon said, I just need to laugh. I just need to enjoy my life. And then in verse 3, he says, I searched with my heart how to cheer the body with wine. Solomon now 
says, you know what? Maybe I just need to drink. Maybe I just, he says, I go out and, you know, and, and I've never been one that's been, you know, a, a, a drinker and, and, and into, you know, alcohol like that. But, you know, it, sometimes, and I, I was sharing with the men this last week, and I, hopefully nobody misunderstands me, and I hope they didn't. But uh, I said, you know, if you've ever watched somebody that's just, you know, given to drink a lot, sometimes it appears that they have not a care in the world. They're laughing. And they don't have the inhibitions in their... They're, you know, just, man, they seem to have life by the tail. Now, you and I know they don't, but the appearance of that is there. And I think Solomon is looking at that and saying, man, maybe that's it. And so he said, I gave myself the wine. I let myself go and I let myself drink. Now, the important part of verse 3 is he says this, I still was controlled by my heart and my wisdom. Solomon never lost control in that. He never just got drunk and, and, and let the alcohol control him. But he says, I tried alcohol and I tried wine and, and I thought, man, maybe that's where it's at. But then he concludes in the midst of all of that that, that it's all vanity. None of it gave purpose and meaning to his life. And I thought, you know, pleasure is, you know, pleasure is fun. I enjoy things, and there's pleasure in many of the things that I do. But pleasure never gives fulfillment in life for a number of reasons. Pleasure never gives fulfillment in life in part because pleasure is focused on who? Me. And, and, and you and I never really find true pleasure in just focusing on myself or ourselves. Never. And we think that we will. But, but God created us to look at others. And to think about others. And to, to, to serve other people. And he commands us to do that in scripture. And real joy and real fulfillment doesn't come from just focusing on me. It comes from me focusing on others. And so while there's nothing wrong with pleasure, it doesn't give fulfillment and meaning in life. Pleasure also falls short because pleasure always has to increase. If, if whatever it is that we're enjoying doesn't increase, it gets boring. And, and it gets old. Take, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe just pick a number of things. Take uh, gambling, for example. You know, you can go out if you're not a gambler, and I'm not a gambler. Uh, but if you go out and start to gamble a little bit, there, there's a little bit of fun in that, right? There's a little intrigue, a little risk. Well, you're not going to gamble nickels and dimes for long. Because that doesn't, that's not fun anymore. You've got to increase the risk. And then that's fun until you have to increase the risk. And, and the same is true with any type of pleasure. Whether, whether it's drinking or drugs or gambling or, or sex or fame or anything, pornography, if it doesn't increase, the pleasure isn't there anymore. And, and so we don't find meaning and fulfillment in pleasure. It doesn't give fulfillment in, in our lives. Pleasure also can lead to bondage. How many try to find pleasure in, in, in alcohol as Solomon did? And if they're not careful, pretty soon there's no pleasure there. They're bound by it. It controls them. And so Solomon said, I tried pleasure and laughter and joy. And he says, man, all of it is chasing the wind. It's folly. It, it's folly. It doesn't do anything to give meaning in life. And then Solomon tried, uh, and many commentators link this together with, with uh, pleasure. I, I separate it. But beginning in verse 4, look at the things that Solomon tried. He tried to find meaning in, in, in his accomplishments and what he did. And how many today think, man, if I can just do something great. Man, if I can, if I can you know, break a record. If I can build something. If I can accomplish something, man, then there's meaning in my life. Look what Solomon said. <clears throat> he said, I made great works. I built houses. I planted vineyards. I made gardens. I put all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made pools of water to water my trees with. I bought male servants and female servants, and I had servants born to me. I had great possessions of herds and flocks. I gathered silver and gold, and he said, the treasure of kings and provinces. I got singers, men and women, 
concubines, which were, were uh, a type of wives. And he said, the concubines were the delight of the sons of men. And notice what he says in verse 9. I became great and surpassed all who were before me in Jerusalem. And my wisdom remained with me. Look at the things that Solomon accomplished. He said, man, I accomplished anything I wanted. If it needed to be accomplished, I did it. I built houses. He built a temple of God. He didn't mention that here. I made gardens. And I thought, you know, there's, there's this... I don't even know how to describe it. There's this thing about being self-sufficient. You know, about being able to raise our own food and take care of ourselves and not need anything outside of ourselves. And there's, there's a sense of accomplishment in that. Solomon says, man, I planted trees and I watered my own trees and I was self-sufficient. I had everything within myself. He said, I accomplished everything that I wanted. But he says, you know what? It was all vanity. It didn't give me meaning and purpose in my, my life. And I think, you know, today people try to, try to give meaning in their lives by accomplishing great things. Now Solomon isn't saying that we shouldn't try to accomplish great things. But he is saying that uh, they're not going to give meaning to the films in our lives. They aren't. I, again, I use a lot of soccer illustrations. Give me two or three weeks, soccer will be over with, and I'll move on to something else. But I was thinking about it this week. And I thought, you know, one of the first years that I coached, one of the girls on the soccer team broke the scoring record for Northeast Bradford. And she scored more goals than anybody had ever scored for Northeast. And nobody has broke her record yet. Does anybody know who it is? Annette will. And I do. I would dare say that if I asked the girls on my soccer team, they wouldn't have a clue. They wouldn't have any idea. And yet several of them are trying to break the scoring record. They don't know what it is. They don't know what number it is. They don't know who holds it. But, but you know, we, we strive to break records and accomplish things. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. I think it's wonderful. To do. But it doesn't give meaning in our lives. I was watching uh, football yesterday. I was waiting for the Penn State game that I didn't realize is next Saturday instead of yesterday. So I was watching uh, Alabama play uh, Ole Miss. That was it. Ole Miss. And Alabama's number one ranked in the country, uh, were, was number one ranked in the country. And they were leading Ole Miss, and Ole Miss came down and, and, and picked up a fumble and ran it in for a touchdown. And, and they, they pulled ahead, and they won the game. In the history of Ole Miss, they had never beat a number one team before. And they certainly hadn't beat Alabama. And these guys are walking off the field, and they're, man, they are on top of the world. They just accomplished something that nobody in their school had ever done before. And I'm sure that the, you know, ESPN and, and all of them are still writing and talking and just going on about it today. In a few years, what difference does it make? What difference does it make? They accomplished something amazing, and it was an exciting, and I was thrilled for them, because I'm not an Alabama fan. I, I was thrilled for them. But I couldn't help but think of Solomon's words and say, I accomplished great things. It's vanity. There's no meaning in my life because of what I accomplished. <clears throat> Solomon goes on, and our time is gone this morning, but Solomon goes on, and he begins to, you know, consider wisdom and folly, and, and, and he goes on to consider his life, and he comes to the same conclusion. All is vanity. It's all vexation. And, and so, you know, we end our message this morning where we ended last week. And it's not one of those, as I said last week, it's not one of those, wow, I really left feeling good from the message this morning. It's kind of a downer. It, it kind of brings us down in our lives. But, but we come back to the place where we ended last week of understanding that true enjoyment and true fulfillment in our lives doesn't come from our things and our accomplishments. It comes from God. If my life is going to have meaning, it's not because I make a great name for myself. It's because I pursue God. And it's because I put God first in my life. And I please God with the things that I do in, in my life. You and I can pursue anything that we choose to pursue. 
But it's only when we seek God in our lives that we find true happiness, true joy, true peace, true meaning and fulfillment in our lives. Sure, other things may have the facade of happiness. And they always seem to be that way when we start out with them. I have no doubt when Solomon laid aside his responsibility and went out and began to laugh and, and drink and have fun, that for a brief moment, he thought, man, this is it. And then all of a sudden, reality came back again. And all of a sudden, he realizes, no, this is just as empty as what I had before. And I'm sure at some point, Solomon looked over his accomplishments and said, man, I've done a lot. And then all of a sudden he said, no, I haven't done anything. It's all gone. It's all, it's all vanity. And, and so, you know, the other things that we can pursue give the facade of happiness. But they always come, in, come up empty. They always fall short. And, and so as we close again this morning, I want to ask uh, again the question very similar to what we asked last week. What are, what are you and I seeking in our lives? What are we striving for in life? You know, how would we answer the question, my life would be fulfilled if only I could what? And if I could only do what? How would my life be fulfilled? Anything short of seeking the Lord leaves us empty and wanting. Even if it promises the world, it leaves us empty. Now, the good news is that Solomon is going to give us some good messages. And Solomon is going to start to focus on, hey, there is meaning in life. It's not all a waste. There is meaning. There is purpose. Solomon is getting there. But he starts by really bringing us down. And bringing us to the back, to the point of just the bottom. And saying, where is your life? What are you pursuing? And where is the value in that? And I hope that as we have considered these things the last couple of weeks, that it really challenges us, challenges us to think about where we're at and where we're going and what we really need to put first as a priority in our lives. Let's take a moment and pray. Father, I thank you this morning for your word. Lord, some of Solomon's words are hard to hear, they're hard to read, and maybe even hard to understand. But Lord, they're necessary because Solomon is writing in his wisdom what he's learned. And he's challenging us to consider what is most important in our lives. And Lord, I pray that we would do that. And the, Lord, the things that are filling a, a spot of being most important that shouldn't be there, I pray, Lord, that you would challenge us to lay those things aside and, and, and put what is more important in their place. And Lord, I pray that as we look back over our lives, that we would be able to see the meaning and the significance there, because you have been there every step of the way. We thank you in Jesus' name.